All right, uh, good, well, I guess it's good afternoon. Um, my name's Danny Kaler, and um, I'm from the Republic of Texas. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as our own country. I'm gonna talk about some innovations in quality management that uh, we've had in construction. How, oh, how do I click this thing? Just hit the, hit the forward button here. Okay, a little bit about myself, uh, about 30 years of practice, a lot of it in design build of mega projects, transportation, inside the United States, and I'm also active in the American Society of Civil Engineers, the American Society for Quality, and the Transportation Research Board. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about design and construction, and I wanna talk about s some of the issues we have, some of the obstacles we have first in quality management of design, which a lot of you have seen, no matter how much BIM or CAD you have, um, then when it gets to quality management, most projects really driven by the contracts uh, require the designers to print it out and people review it on paper. Well, they can't keep up with the modern design process. So it is a bottleneck to design in a digital world. And also, once we print it out, when we turn data into documents, people tend to focus on the cosmetics of it. I don't like that font, uh, the line weight, blah, 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 and they don't look at the numbers. So the very nature of these analog documents that people review uh, take our focus away from the really important quality of the design and that's something that we can build without errors and emissions. Uh, construction quality management has some obstacles. Uh, most people are, tra are trained to go out and look at something and their job is to find something wrong which justifies their existence. But quality management means we need to look at a system and say okay what's wrong with the system? Products that are wrong are just uh, symptoms of that system that has a problem and we also have tribal knowledge, just kind of go, well, I, I, I've been doing projects here for 20 years and I've learned things. Some of them aren't written down. And so I enforce things that aren't necessarily in the contract and things that are in the contract, I, I let go because it's not part of my tribal knowledge. That's, they say, well, that's not how we do things around here. And also this uh, contamination, this mixing of quality control and quality assurance with um, you know, sometimes anecdotal information about the quality of the project that's not based on good science and engineering. So I'm going to talk about some things that, have, and these happened on projects that I've been on. I personally witnessed and implemented these things as so some of the examples of projects that are in the United States. And these are all transportation projects, either design build or uh, public-private partnership or concession. Uh, SH-130 is about a $3 billion job in Texas. It was where we prototyped some digital design review. Uh, what's interesting about this is we had uh, 10 senior engineers reviewing documents two junior engineers reviewing the data of the design. The two junior engineers found 80% of the design errors and emissions. Uh, in the construction side, the contractor is high tech. They were building uh, 100 miles of roadway without a stake in the ground. But the construction engineering and inspection firm hired a bunch of retirees from the local state highway agency. And they were looking for wood in the ground and physical monuments. And they didn't know how to use the technology. So they became the bottleneck to the contractor's uh, high tech construction processes. In a county connector, another three billion job in Maryland. Uh, sometimes they don't, they, sometimes they do a little bit of it. They do some things in analog, but we keep the information in a database. It's crawling towards some improvement. The same thing with the new I-64 in St. Louis. Um, but on the KC Icon, there's about a 300 million cable state bridge in Kansas City. We actually went in with the Missouri Department of Transportation and used the American Society Quality Body of Knowledge to retrain uh, their former inspectors as quality auditors, train them to look at the system instead of the pro instead of the, the actual product. And so they expected the design builder to control the quality of the product. And it took the, it took the inspection and appraisal away as a bottleneck and actually improved the morale of the people working on the project. Uh, Pioneer Crossing is where we did digital constru construction engineering inspection. So we threw away the paper plans, we threw away the wheels, Everybody was outfitted with data collectors, in this case, you know, the Trimble Geo Explorers. You know, sometimes they were down, accuracies down to about uh, four, uh, five or six centimeters. Every inspection sample and test on the job was uh, collected with a data collector and overlaid onto the design in a geographic information system so we could see everything on the job. By the time we were done with the job, we had like over a million records of quality data that could be sorted any way we want. Um, and so that's, that's really taken this, tech, the enabling technology didn't solve it, but it's the application of the enabling technology with the new theory of quality practice. Uh, DFW Connector in Dallas, 
That's where we did all the design in real time, the design quality control. I was the design quality control engineer. We did it real time in the electronic world, not a single piece of paper. Sadly, though, the, the Department of Transportation's contract required paper submittals of quality control review at the end with red pencil and yellow highlighter. And so we waited until the end of the job, took all the digital data files, projected them on the wall, and all the junior engineers just looked at it and just transcribed it on paper, and we handed it in to the public agency owner. It's like, well, we didn't really do it that way, but we, we had to make it look like we did it that way because they were unwilling to change the contract. So the terms of the legacy contract actually discouraged the use of innovation and lean practices. Um, and LBJ Express, again, we did the same thing, full digital review of the design, and we even messed, messed around with things like the scale. So transportation is not really 3D, it's kind of 2.5D, but you know, rider, you know, rideability and the flow the, of the traffic through the, through the project without having lots of bumps and accelerations and decelerations. So we could actually take the, the things we can't do in the, in the analog world, we can take the design and blow up the vertical 10 times, and anything that, that would make for a bad ride really jumps out. So we want to have a taxonomy. So those are just some of the projects, but we have to organize it somehow. Uh, we can look at model-centric quality assurance, the requirements management, uh, GIS quality assurance, uh, and I'll get into some of these later. Looking at uh, how we prioritize activities, uh, validating quality control through statistical validation so we don't have to look at the same thing five times. I think the Brits call it man marking, where you have a person watching a person, watching a person, watching a person, watching a person, and finally somewhere that person's doing work. And there are six people watching in a chain. It's like, well, that's not very lean. Like one person's working and six people are watching, writing down documents, you know, so that's a lot of waste there. Uh, so the model centric quality assurance is, is where it's, we, we, whether you call it BIM or whatever, because think about it, we say, we, we throw on words like BIM or GIS, but really it's spatial information combined with non-spatial information in a relational database. CAD is spatial information with non-spatial information in a relational database. GIS is the same thing, see there's a pattern. So what do we call it? It's spatial information and non-spatial information in a relational database that represents the design. So here we are at 5%, and we see a pipe in the middle of the air, which normally in the analog world we wouldn't find till 30% when the plans were submitted for review. So mistakes happen, but what's good is we find the mistakes faster, and it becomes, uh, the quality review uh, ceases to become the bottleneck. But you have to have people that know technology, right? Now they don't necessarily have to be CAD designers or, or model designers, but they need to know how to work in this digital world to find out what's going on. Uh, requirements management comes out of systems engineering. So we civil engineers, we like to write our requirements like, like you know, epic narratives and this whole story about contractors shall do this and contractors shall do that. But can we, change, can we put those requirements into formulas and math like the systems engineers do? And I think the answer is yes, because once we put it in a model, not just the, the dimensional uh, like the nature of the job in a model, but the requirements in a model, then we can automate it. And we can say, we can automate the data collection of what happened and, and compare it to the automated requirements in that relational database. Uh, GIS quality assurance, when I say this measles chart, it comes out, of, comes out of the ASQ body knowledge where you have manufacturing, uh, you take a, you know, all the defects you find in hundreds of parts and you plot them on an image of the part, uh, the part. it kind of looks like the part has measles, but you're looking for patterns. And we can do the same thing on a project that's 10 miles long. Now, there's an example. Uh, like an interchange project, and data is collected, and instead of just having a list of data collected, we can visually see where all the data was collected and what data was bad to look for patterns on the project because we're, we were visual animals, we're not text animals. Just off the shelf data collection, no, no proprietary software, uh, some, and, and as well as accuracy, not everything requires sub centimeter accuracy. Some things require two to five meters, some things require three centimeters depending on what you're doing. It all depends on what the requirements of the engineering are. Uh, we can look at the prioritization of activities. Why, you know, we don't need to go out and look at everything on a project. Uh, we can look at the work breakdown structure and the activities in the CPM and give them some sort of priority in terms of their risk. It could be the cost, but not necessarily, the high cost isn't necessarily high risk. You know, a five dollar sensor on a billion dollar B-2 bomber, uh, brought it down in Guam about 20 years ago because it got waterlogged with you know, got water in it. Um, and so we can apply this thing called failure mode and effects analysis, which again comes out of systems engineering, where it's not just severity and probability, but in quality, we, we need to detect things. Quality is about detecting problems we have 
And so we put that in there. So something that's severe and highly probable may not be high risk if it's easily detectable, right? But if it's not easily detectable in the process, then it gets hidden as a latent error and it fails in service. So that's, that's how we can apply it, not, to actual, not just to actual failure, but failure to meet contract requirements in the quality. We can look at um, the validation of the quality control data. So when people are producing, producing work, if we, if we design it right, the production of work creates information about that work, right? And if we have information about that work, do we really need to go and check 100% of that work? Or can we check maybe 10% of that work? And as we all learn statistics, you know, means and variance and the F and T test, if we can statistically validate that that person creating that data is telling the truth, then we say, well, we don't need to check 100% of it. I believe you because I believe your data. But if we can't statistically validate it and they're lying or the pencil whipping the data, then we say, well, your data, well, I can't trust your data. Now we're going to go in and test 100%. Uh, we also need to do the people. The, the, you know, there's equipment, there's processes, there's people. We have to need to validate that they're qualified, they know what they're doing. I don't care how good your processes are. If you have a person that's not qualified, using equipment that's ca not calibrated, you're not going to get good results. So the framework is like how we write a story. So they say, well, what parts of the quality do we innovate in? It's like who, what, when, where, high, and how. Uh, so, well, usually quality involves a who. Somebody's collecting the data, somebody's producing it, we need to find out who that is because different people have different styles. We need to know what we're doing it on and not everything has to be in writing. The collection of information can be images, it can be sound, it can be video, uh, whatever describes the work and how do we compare it to the requirements in that contract. Uh, when most of, this, most of this equipment, if we collect data, uh, ca uh, captures when we do it to the second and it's, and it's not counterfeitable. It's like a very, it's like cor very courtroom defendable, even more than paper. Where is a coordinate system? So I know a lot of times you if you talk about, you know, uh, area-based management, well, on a job that's, you know, 20 miles long, it may be a coordinate system, X, Y, Z, or it could be a curvilinear coordinate system. A high-speed rail in, in Texas, we're gonna have a coordinate system that's 400 kilometers long from Dallas to Houston. Um, and that coordinate system of where is also uh, drives what kind of accuracy equipment that you need. Not everybody needs a $30,000 Trimble RTK unit. Some people can go out with a $100 GPS if it's in that right coordinate system and collect data that's adequate enough to go in the system. Why we're doing it? Why are we collecting data on things? There's got to be a requirement. If there's not a requirement for something, then you've got to ask why are we wasting the client's money looking at it? And how we do it is also very important. Uh, and all those, so all those things go into the story of managing quality and it's a framework of if we're going to try to change something to innovate, we can say which part of it we're going to do. So I have two minutes left, so I guess I'm good because that's the last slide. Thank you for attendance. I know everything sees everybody clearer now. All right. Okay. Thank you.